I break through the trees, landing in the ditch and jamming two fingers in the process as I throw my paws out to catch myself. I don't care, though. I scramble out of the ditch, gasping for breath. I look up, hoping to see TJ, Julian, even Janice. <laughs> Gosh dang but... it. Wow, poor Janice. <laughs> no one's there. Both cars are gone. I'm left alone on the road, in the silence, and increased darkness. Like, so that... like I said last time, I really do want to know what TJ said. Yeah. To, like, to them about, like, oh, it's okay if we leave. <laughs> like... Yeah, like, I... I... I think I called it previously when, it, like, because TJ doesn't want to be anywhere near Chase right now, so he probably did say something about how, like, Chase wants to. Chase is just getting more footage for his documentary. He's gonna walk back to the motel because it's just little old Echo. That is the best excuse. That was yeah, but that does make so Chase just got attacked in the woods by a, the, a creature. And that's exactly what he dreamed about happening in the woods by Leo's trailer in Leo's route. So that gives us enough geographical information to tell us that the closest character to Chase right now, if he's scared, is Leo. Which is perfect. It's almost <laughs> as if Leo put the woods there on purpose. So Chase <laughs> would have to plan. get scared in there he's been, and come running to him. He's been planning this ever since before either of them were born. He's he like, <laughs> he's out planting trees. He's like, yeah. he's going to Home Depot and buying. Yep. Leo was actually behind all of the notes, <laughs> having, <laughs> having not been in this route. That would honestly be the biggest twist of... of I would be, not expect that be, one at all. It would be a, it would a make very no bad sense. twist. <laughs> it would be a bad twist. It would be terrible. But I would laugh. <laughs> Which is almost as good as being good. <laughs> sometimes. Sometimes. I'm, al I'm left alone on the road, in the silence and increasing darkness. Or it just goes right back to the motel with the funny sky. I walk back to the motel alone. <laughs> Leo's like, aww. Aww. And the TV dinner's prepped and everything. I hope to see Julian's truck in the parking lot when I get there, but it isn't. Instead, there's the typical two or three cars along with my own. You mean the one car that's just always there? <laughs> the one in the photo. The, 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 the photographer's car. <laughs> the one he drove to this place. I still have hope as I make my way to the door. Maybe TJ will be in the bathroom taking a shower. Maybe he'll already be asleep. Maybe he'll be awake and we can just forget what happened. Chat until it's late. Order a pizza like we did at Carl's house. You kind of ruined that, Chase. Like, despite appearances, the, the kiss was not the fatal mistake here. But how he reacted after that misunderstanding yeah. was so bridge burning that you're like, you're... <laughs> Because there's, 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 there's I half expect Chase to just not have anyone left this route. Like, he's just alone in Echo when it's everything goes bad. It's just the extra bad ending. Like, yeah, it's like the worst ending of all is that, like, Echo goes into Silent Hill mode and no one's here. Like, everyone he knows left. Him specifically. <laughs> because he burned every possible bridge. The only person he hasn't actively spurned, I think, is Leo. Because he hasn't been interacted here. with leo <laughs> yeah by sheer avoidance it, the relationship has been preserved like in a way he he did an accidental favor for jenna and uh oh well jenna left it yeah no yeah so he did he did like an accidental favor for jenna and carl and that they're not gonna be here during the most traumatic time of their lives yeah uh but not in any way that was like conscious he's not like fucking like I can see all of the timelines like Dr. Manhattan. I must make this tragic choice to burden my friendship in order to save them. Like, no, he's just a fucking horny asshole. He's just a weird little gremlin man. Gosh, that would be, Okay, I'm just imagining a situation. He's Mr. Brightside. Oh, my God. <laughs> I just showed... <laughs> this song that means nothing to anyone, but, like, I just... It means we, a lot of things to a lot of people, I'm we, sure. We, we, were just <laughs> we were just talking about the killers and stuff, and and... Aerosmith and the raccoons and stuff like that and I I brought up the fact that I know of a full-length furry comic adaptation of the song Mr. Brightside uh and then I looked it up on Fur Affinity and it was 13 years old and I was I'm traumatized by that right now I'm not I'm not happy with how old that that, that comic is uh but that's on my mind right now and I'm like Chase is Mr. Brightside from that comic he's awful he's not Mr. Brightside's kind of sympathetic like you don't you don't hate him he, in the song. 
Uh, do you though? <laughs> you don't know. So okay. In the adaptation, in, in, at least. In the adaptation, in the adaptation, he kills his the, his girl, his girlfriend, or whoever it was, and whoever she was sleeping with. The song never says anything about that. Yeah. I think I just think he's upset. Well, he's the, but chases that Mister Bryce. <laughs> chases chases the the, the, fact- the one that kills the lover instead of saying, "Can I join in?" I hope we never see TJ again. I hope he's just gone for his own sake. Yes. Just flee. Everyone should flee Echo for, to get, because Chase is there. He is the calamity. Yeah, so what if what if Chase really did just save everyone by like yeah. dispersing all of them and he's actually the hero of this route? Surprise! Yep. And, and then as Jenna drowns us, the whole city with a dam, he'll just have to hold hands with Brian this and is die. The story of a girl who and cried over and drowned the whole world. world. Actually, it was just Echo. She wanted to see that place go. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> that's Heather's 90s th- songs. Yep, that's Heather's theme song. Heather's? Yeah. It wouldn't it be Jenna's. Jenna well, Heather's the, the one that set out to do it first. And she's the one that cries. Oh, that is Jenna true. Jenna never cries. That it- <laughs> ever. <laughs> never cries. No, she's she's cold. <laughs> so she's, the, she's the opposite of me, then. She's, yeah. <laughs> I cry all the time. But as I press the key card to the lock and it flashes green and I open the door, I don't see TJ at all. Good! (laughs) (laughs) Just almost made Stephanie snort corona. (laughs) (laughs) Not coronavirus. No. A beer. It's dark and empty. So dark that people on phones think there's not a background right now, probably, but there is. We should start gaslighting people and tell people that there's a background when there is Every time, none. <laughs> whenever it goes black, we're just like, oh, wow. Well, look at that cha- thing in the what's corner. What's Chase doing? Wow. <laughs> That'd be horrible. <laughs> That's finally when I realized that TJ's left me as well. Oh, no. My mind is blank as I walk through the motel room, only then realizing that I left the camera in the forest. I don't care, though. It doesn't matter. And he's already throwing it in the back of Julian's truck and be like, whatever, just, it's expensive, it's stupid it. rental, I don't care. Uh, to be fair, yeah, it isn't, it isn't his camera. It's, yeah, but it's you fucking property. get to pay for it. I, that's not okay. You're gonna have yeah. to pay for it. It's not even yours. But you're, you're just more sentimentally attached to things that are yours than stuff that you might be beholden to. I guess. I'm beholden to money. So... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying that when at Las Vegas FurCon, some of those people aren't getting their deposits back. <laughs> yeah. It's not the same thing to be well, trusted to something as to, as it is to own it. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, in that case, you're you're paying for an experience. It's, it's not <laughs> as if you're, I mean, you're not, like, I guess you're Chase renting that chair. paying to ruin his life. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing matters anymore. I curl up on the bed and cry for a long time. I don't care how loud I am. I'm sure if anyone hears it, they've ho- they've heard worse. Yeah, in this hotel, perhaps. Yeah. The employee at the front desk probably hears it every week because that's just the way this town is. I fall asleep. I mean, I'm pretty sure the guy at the front desk is at least hoping for, like, fucking instead of crying. Like, yeah. I'm sure he probably, like, if he had a pick. <laughs> <laughs> just he'll hear it ringing out through the fucking parking lot because this is every door has negative sound resistance, sound noise suppression. There's something so heartbreaking when you are in a hotel room and you realize how not soundproof it is. And you're like, dang it, I can't have any fun. <laughs> <laughs> or just you just have to own it. It's like, oh, you hear children in the next room. You're like, damn it. No. <laughs> damn it, I can't be that person. Just got to be an exhibitionist about it. When I wake up, I can't move. I don't care, though. It doesn't matter anymore. Even though I know better, I open my eyes. Weirdly enough, the motel's as I left it, disheveled with the lights on. Nothing horrible at all, until I hear footsteps at the base of my bed. I brace myself for it, but I keep my eyes open. I don't know why. I guess it feels like I'm punishing myself for what I did to TJ. Wow, self-awareness on some level. But also not doing anything about it, because... That puts him ahead of Jenna Route Leo, I guess. (laughs) Self-punishment means nothing, though. You're not helping anyone. It's just just the fact that he knows he's in the wrong on some level, which Leo did not. But he doesn't even know he's wrong for the right reason yet. Probably. I lie there on my side, curled up and waiting as the footsteps make their way around the bed. I don't know what I expect my mind to conjure up. Maybe the demon in the forest, the evil electric creature that breathed into my ear as I ran from it, 
jumping from tree to tree behind me. But what I didn't expect to see is a small, old kit fox in a button-up shirt and tie. <laughs> what? <laughs> so a kit fox must be a type of fox as opposed to a fox kit, which is a child. Because you can't... Unless he's an old child. <laughs> and no, a kit fox is a type of fox. Yeah. Just an old kit fox in a button-up shirt and tie. Uh, oh. Who is this? Oh. So for context, I beat uh, Arches last week, viewers. So I think I, I think I'm recognizing something I shouldn't talk about. <laughs> but I've drawn a connection. We'll see. I was hoping it was going to be the the hotel manager guy who's like, "Are you okay? I heard you crying." <laughs> yeah. I just I think I might know where this scene goes. I watch as he sets a card down on the little table next to my bed. I get a moment to see a silver ring on his finger and the worn black claws. Then he picks up a bottle from the table that isn't there and takes a swig from it. Then he moves over to the closet, Rod, clothes that I don't recognize hanging from it. He's got a cord of some kind in his paws. Yep. He starts to tie it up. He starts to tie up the rod with the other end and gets tied around his neck. I know what he's doing, and now I try to close my eyes, but something seems to hold them open. This is too real. The fox braces himself against the wall, and I see his face clearly, kind, weary, hopeless. And then he sits. But he doesn't completely sit, because the cord pulls taut, and he's left with his legs at a loose slant on the ground. I see his eyes bulge, turning red, and at the same time, those eyes meet mine. I think he sees me. I gasp and sit up in bed, but he doesn't just he doesn't disappear, he lingers. It's only when he starts to go into convulsions that he begins to fade away. I hug my knees, my back pressed against the headboard of the bed as the fox continues to stare at me, then completely disappears. It was real. It was real. Was. Something's different. Something's wrong in the air. A sound from the bathroom makes me look over at the closet do at the closed door. Something's in there. Automatically, I get up. It's like I'm not in control of my body anymore. It's like I'm still in a dream, even though I know I'm not. I get to the door and stand there a little while, listening to the breathing inside. And then I open it. I stand there for a while, staring in. The light from the room pours into the bathroom, but it isn't enough to show me anything out of the ordinary. I feel it, though. There's an energy in there pulling me in. Slowly, I step inside, looking around, my heart hammer- my ham- the <laughs> blah, 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 blah. I step inside, looking around, my heart hammering in my chest. I'm not scared. Not anymore. It's a sort of anticipation instead of fear. Like I've been waiting for this ever since I got to Echo. I don't know if I believe in ghosts now, but I know what's happening here is real. I wait, feeling the cold tiles of the bathroom against the pads of my feet. I'm not sure how long I, I stand there in complete silence. I, it could be anywhere from one minute to ten. But that's finally when I get an answer. Close the door. Close the door. I don't hear anything, but I feel it, and I feel it coming from my left. I look, but I don't see anything. This isn't like the other times, when I'd hear him inside my head. No, the voice inside me is hiding right now, like even he's afraid of this. Still. I sense it, and even though I start to feel that fear again, I reach out for the door. Close it, close it, close the door. For a brief moment, I have a sudden realization of where I am, what I'm doing, and what's happening. But that's not enough to stop me. There's a haze over my mind, over everything, like I'm in a deep, dark dream that I can't come up from. I think I've lost my mind, or I'm dead. Either way, it doesn't matter anymore. 
I push the door closed, but not fully, letting just a crack of light in so that, through the mirror, I can see the outline of the fur on the left side of my head. Mmm. I won't listen to Bloody Mary. It's not a dare. <laughs> Technically, it's a dare, usually, but... <laughs> I mean, Chase is like, I have a feeling I know exactly what's happening. Yeah. That doesn't mean you should do it. Chase is like, come get me, Candyman. <laughs> yeah, he's... <laughs> OTP. I'm a Candyman simp. But as I'm looking Are at Are you? That... <laughs> but as I'm looking at that, I start to get the feeling that it's not me in the mirror. I look shorter. Smaller. And something's wrong with my face. I can almost see what looks like the corner of a mouth stretched all the way across the jaw. Just like I saw in the diner bathroom. Five days ago? That was like five days ago. I don't know. It feels so long. But it's then that I realize the presence I feel is coming from this... thing in the mirror. We stare at each other for a long time. The fear rising and rising until it's almost overwhelming. But my feet won't move. My mind won't reason with what's happening. I'm in a nightmare. This is real. The mirror whispers at me, and I see the grotesque mouth move with the raspy, whispering words. Slowly, I move a little closer to the mirror, ducking my head down a bit, reaching up to touch my cheek, where I see the widened gash of a mouth. The reflection does the same, but when I touch my face, I feel only smooth fur even as the fingers in my in the mirror brush against the opening. What's happening? I ask myself, but my reflection responds. What's been happening for eons? What was supposed to happen to everyone else in this town, but you stopped it? W what? Coming back here with your secret? Almost started it. But now that everyone's about to but now that everyone's about to find out what are you talking about this town might actually survive if they find out find out what i bring both paws up to press against the sides of my face as if to cover up the gaping mouth you know what I squint at the reflection, trying to figure out why it looks so familiar. Sydney? There's a raspy, rustling sound, and I see the thing in the mirror shake, its head twitching from side to side, far too fast to be anything of this world. I take a step back. Dread rises in my chest. No. No, this was supposed to be over. I'm not supposed to see things anymore. You always knew they were wrong. Always knew that what you saw was real. Nothing normal about this. But it's not me seeing things again that's got me feeling the way I do. No. What secret are you talking about? Again, that raspy voice of rustled leaves, sounding old and forgotten. That's what it feels like I'm talking to. Something old, monolithic, and ancient. You don't need me to tell you. I grasp my shirt, twisting the fabric in my paws, feeling like I might panic, that I might go insane. Already insane. <laughs> but how is anyone going to find out? No one knows. You know that's not true. Who was responsible for the cruel <laughs> joke? <laughs> I swallowed hard. <clears throat> Someone knows. No, that... That was... That was something else. They didn't know. It, it was a stupid prank on me. To make me look bad. To ruin our vacation. <laughs> vacation. Is that what I'm on right now? It doesn't seem that way, does it? No. That thought is foolish and you know it it was definitely foolish and you know 
who it was. And after what you did to him... I see myself pinning the lizard in the, in the parking lot, holding back from pounding his face into nothing. He's going to tell everyone. No. I hear myself whine, feeling like a child, like the small creature in the mirror. Yes. Unless... I wait, feeling tears well up in my eyes, knowing that my life is about to change forever. The silence drags on and on until I finally break it. What? I can help you keep the secret. Because it wants the town destroyed. Mm-hmm. I wait a little longer, but the reflection stays quiet. I get the sense that time is going faster than I perceive it, my legs aching from standing here rigidly on the cold, tile floor. Help me? I can tell you what you can do to keep things the way they are. I feel a small ray of hope pierce through the towering cloud of impending doom in my chest. How? There's a dark pause, a moment that marks an in-between, between what was and what's about to become. I know things can't truly stay the way they are. They never do. Another split in my life, just like what happened years ago. Finally, the thing speaks, and I hear exactly what I expect. Do the same to the lizard. I swallow, feeling myself resisting, rejecting the idea. Unless you want... Tell all, them all to know, your secret. But how do I know it was him? He sounded like he had no idea what he was doing, what we were doing. He is deceptive, a liar. His entire family has always been. But I can't, if I don't know for sure, show him the note. You'll see his reaction, the truth. My paw drifts to my pocket, feeling the gentle outline of the folded paper. Who are you? The rustling leaves again, and I realize that while they, this might be Sydney, it's something more than Sydney. And it doesn't answer me. We stand there for a long time again. Minutes. Hours. I don't know. Why would you help me? This time the answer is immediate. This town needs secrets. Why? Again, no answer. And I stand there for what feels like hours. As I continue to stare at the small, disfigured creature, I get the feeling that's starting to move independent from me. That thought scares me, and I left my paws. I'm relieved to see the reflection do the same. But as soon as I touch my face, I feel the corner of my mouth stretched up to my ears. Ew. <laughs> in a sudden burst of panic, I lunge for the light switch and flip it on. I'm stunned as I... I'm bathed in blinding yellow light, and have to shut my eyes for a moment before opening them. I see myself in the mirror, as I've always been, staring back blearily. My eyes are bloodshot, and my figure seems to sag with exhaustion. I stand there for a while, feeling my mind cloud up even more as I go over what just happened. Then a violent shiver comes over my body, like I'm suffering a high fever. I feel sick. My skin is sensitive, and my joints are sore. My joints are sore, and after a moment, I move back into the motel room. I can see that it's light outside through the curtains. How long was I in there? It must have been hours. I don't care though. Still shivering, I head for the, clo the closest bed, sliding under the covers in my in my clothes and laying my head against the pillow. 
I realize then this is Jenna's bed, and I can smell her perfume, along with the faint scent of fox musk on the pillow. Where was she again? I can't even remember through the haze in my head. I think I fall asleep, but I'm not sure. A sudden knock at the door makes me jump. I curl up tighter under the covers, hoping that I just dreamed it, or that whatever is outside just goes away. And then the knock again, followed by Leo's oh, voice. Here he is. Yeah. Uh, Otter, you in there? I cringe, squeezing my eyes shut, having completely forgotten about him. <laughs> <laughs> Leo. I'm sure he, I'm sure he would love to know that. Uh, you don't even exist to him in this route. I mean, to be fair, he's got a lot of shit going on. Yeah. But uh, yeah. poor Leo. I do feel bad for him this time. When he's like I th- I fell I fall asleep or at least I think I did. I'm like half expecting him to wake up over Flynn's body or something. <laughs> I I like um I I'm still standing with my my previous assertion that i don't think flynn fucking knows and i i do think that this so i don't think flynn knows and i think the fact that the ghost we just talked to is really seems to lay into the idea that that flynn does know and the flynn is the one that did the the treasure hunt makes me think that it's definitely a, a, some weird manifestation of chase's own issues and problems because it having that idea seems like something that would have to be from chase's brain but I yeah. like that he himself still has a sliver of doubt that it could be him. I still really think that Flynn didn't do it. And I think he's going to go try to do something horrible to Flynn. Mm-hmm. And Flynn's going to be like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> I hope he doesn't succeed because I do. Flynn is my favorite. I'm essentially torn between whether or not <clears throat> it was Chase or uh, TJ that left the notes. And it's hard to square either of them, but no one else makes any sense. Yeah, because, like, Flynn, like I said, Flynn still doesn't make any sense to me no, at all. No, Flynn doesn't behave that way. But the fact that the, the the apparition we just spoke to is, like, implies, like, he he's like, oh, you should just go do, I mean, he didn't say what to do, but I get the impression he means, like, go, like, fucking kill Flynn. Uh, so he's quiet about your secret. Makes me think that. Yeah, it's just Chase is having some weird thing where he's talking to himself and having some weird yeah problem. There's like 500 clues that TJ did it, and like only but like, his reaction really almost, threw me off. Yeah, his like, reaction a, really a fucked ton. with me. And the 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 alternative seems to be that potentially Chase is possessed and like at war with himself. Yeah, so like he literally tore up his own note and replaced it with another note <laughs> because he did it himself, but he doesn't know the other him is doing that at night or something. It reminds me of that paranoia agent episode with with the girl who has her other version of herself at night and she's like a nice school teacher but at night she's like a hooker Hmm. and so they they keep fighting with each other because they keep throwing out each other's clothes and then she like writes an angry note she's like bitch you threw out my clothes like i'll throw out all your stuff and destroy everything that you love so she wakes up and like all of her stuff's destroyed because her other version of herself is uh trying to sabotage her life (laughs) what a horrible horrible thought yeah like dr jekyll mr hyde stuff it's like you know it's like when drunk stephanie leaves sober stephanie a note <laughs> which is ha- half the time hilarious half the time distressing <laughs> sometimes it turns into poetry and sometimes it was trying to be poetry but i can't fucking read it are they just incomprehensible half the time you're like what the fuck did i even write here what am yeah. i talking about yeah i know i have some good ones and then usually if i find them i'll sit there and i'll try to translate what they mean and then i'll write them out oh my god yeah it's, it's fun i used to have a notebook for that specifically which is a t- terrible <laughs> i cringe squeezing my eyes shut having completely forgotten about him why has he chosen to show up now I lay still for a moment, then he yells again, which makes me jump out of the bed, cringing at the pain in my joints. Groggily, I stumble to the door, leaning against it for a moment as I feel lightheaded, trying to gather myself. Finally, I fix my face into a tired smile before opening the door. Leo stands there, his ears perked, eyes wide as as if he hadn't expected me to open the door. Uh, oh, uh, 
Hey, Chase. Uh, are you alright? Watch it have been like two days or something. Which wouldn't make any sense. It's cause... like fucking Wednesday again. Yeah, oh no. He reaches out to rest upon my shoulder, looking me over. Yeah. Was up all night doing my project. I left it until the last minute. <laughs> Damn straight you did, because you haven't done any of it. I gave him a sheepish grin. We never got a time we never got a day transition slide, did we? No. That's unusual. That's kind of suspicious. Yeah, what does this mean? Are we dreaming? Leo clicks his tongue at me. Isn't that due tomorrow? Aren't you driving home all day today? Oh god, that sounds horrible. <laughs> it's the day the project's due. This is the and actual- I, And I forgot my pants. <laughs> the actual nightmare of Echo is uh, having a project, your final project, due tomorrow. You haven't started it. You've ruined all the relationships with all your friends, and you have to drive back home <laughs> all day. So it's not as if you can do it anyway. <laughs> I hate that, like, school is so stressful that it makes you have nightmares about it a decade after you stopped going. <laughs> I mean, I have dreams about school. Actually, well, I have more dreams about work than I do about school. Mm -hmm. It's fucking sad. I shrug. I'll be fine. If you say so, Otter. He continues to stare at me with a look of concern. What's up? Well... I guess I'm just sorry that I haven't been around more this week. I... Well, I... I guess I was just being a bit unfair to you. Gosh, Leo, I get you got your own problems, but like, dude, you don't know what we've been on. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't even know, okay? Sorry, dude. I rack my brain for a reason why Leo's apologizing to me, or how exactly he's been unfair to me. He's like, I've been ignoring you, but... <laughs> like, Chase didn't notice. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I guess I've been a bit down because you weren't talking to me as much as I thought you would. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Had Leo been avoiding oh me all week? Oh my gosh, that's so funny! <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's so sad. Chase didn't even notice. Because Chase didn't care. That's so fucking funny. Leo. <laughs> gosh, I hope I can you be- You need to move out of this town and never talk to Chase again. I hope I can be- as mean I hope I can be that mean to someone someday. <laughs> that's a goal. That's a goal on cruelty right there. You wanna be a really mean significant Just the level other. of sting of being that fucking petty to someone and them not even noticing. It's, it's on the same level as like they don't even register you're there. As like running into your ex and being like, What was your name again? Like it's it's on a similar level. Yeah. Or like the uh you do text them and you're like, Whose number is this? And then they tell you their name and you're like What's your last name? Because I, I need to know which one you are, because I know a few people with your name. Top tier mean girl tricks I've used on people. <laughs> but this one is good. Chase thinks about Leo so But no so one little ever ignores me, so this couldn't happen to me. Darn. Ch Chase thinks about Leo so little that a note said bring Leo, and he still didn't think about Leo. <laughs> yeah, he just like skimmed it. And just... Yeah. You read my email? I skimmed it. <laughs> Mr. Pilgrim. Yeah. Have they been avoiding me all week? I hadn't even noticed. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's so it's mean. Brutal. It's so mean. Like you better when you're on the back of a milk carton. Uh oh. Well, it's alright. I, I I was wondering why you hadn't texted me. I'd I'd been missing you. <laughs> Chase will just lie to someone's face. Ah. Leo's ears flatten and see I look and I see a look of shame across his face. Uh, you could have texted me too, you know. I didn't want to bother you. I could tell you weren't all that happy. Leo lets out a big sigh, letting his shoulders droop. Uh, I'm sorry, Chase. I I guess I just felt kind of shitty after what Flynn did, and then he just kind of went quiet. I scratched the back of my head. Yeah, I can't deny—I can't deny that he kind of ruined the vibe of the whole trip. But I really should have called you afterwards. I'm sorry too. My dad did call me into work every day, so I guess it would have been hard to work things out anyway. <laughs> Which is why he just fucking ignores his dad for the entire Leo and Jenna's routes. I know. Yeah, for the other ones, he just—he like he's you know—he's clearly in family trouble by the end of those routes. 
That sounds familiar. He's still making you work weekends, too? Usually, yeah. Leah looks past my shoulder into the motel room. Anyway, when I texted Jenna, it sounded like something was wrong. I, I guess she's already back in Pueblo? Yeah, with the zebra. I shrug. <laughs> yeah, I think the tension got to her in the end, and she took off early. She was complaining about Flynn the entire time she was here. Chase will just lie to a man. Well, he's really just fast about it, too. Yeah, no, he's just making up an entire alternate universe where he's not the cause of everything. Where he's working on his project, where, you know, everyone is angry but never at him, like, and he didn't do anything wrong. Yeah. What a nice fake world that is. Why don't you just make that the real world by not being such a fuck up? <laughs> <laughs> Leo lets out an another big sigh. Great. He has been acting strange, too. Oh, yeah? I silently hope that the wolf isn't going to ask to be let in. Oh, damn. <laughs> oh, my gosh. We do not have the time of day for this man. <laughs> Leo shows up and Chase is just like, go away, go away, go away, go away, go away. Oh, go away. my God. Yeah, driving around, acting all shady. That's actually what made me want to visit you, see if everything was okay. Carl isn't even responding to me. I'm good. Just tired and stressed out. Is Teach here? He's actually hanging out with an old friend in Peyton right now. Once he comes back, we're gonna start driving back. I was actually in the middle of a nap. Oh, sorry. You, uh, wanting to get back to that then? Yeah. <laughs> I smile guiltily. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Ah, this is vicious. This is horrible. Poor Leo shows up to finally interact in this trip where you're supposedly visiting your friends, and you're like, "Yeah, I was really looking to take a nap and then leave forever." It was, you know, it's like, oh, I just imagine like Chase like playing with his hair and being like. Oh, Leo. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I missed you, too. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, um, you know, like, I would love to hang out with you like right now. We could, like, talk about all this stuff that you're really upset about. But, like, I was napping. And, like, that's really important. So, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, you just no care at all. Oh, my gosh. This... <laughs> like, this... This fucking route is, like, on a mission to make Chase the worst character in the entire Echoverse besides, like, Brian. <laughs> and that's just because he's a comical nightmare villain man. Like, yeah, yeah, like, Brian is literally a rapist, and so if Chase is the second worst character, <laughs> that's kind of a thing, you know? Like, Chase is not looking great on, like, the would you rather between, like, him and, like, Clint. <laughs> And that's a rough I mean, place to be. I could polish Clint up, you know. Like you can, he needs, he just needs to heal those those uh those yeah. tweaker scars. And he's like, gotta just clean up Clint, take him to the gym. You know, guess put on some methadone. It's, it's like when you, it's like dog rescue videos, but for Clint. I could do it. <laughs> I could do it. I've done it before. I <laughs> I saw um one of my memes I always think about it. It's like, oh, you see a girl with, like, a bunch of pets. It's like, you know, she'd be able to do deal with another useless fuck in her life. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so it's like, I, I'm like, oh, I look at my, like, crippled one-eyed dog and I look at all my pets. I'm like, yeah, I'd be a person that'd take Clint, probably, and be like, no. I, can, I can help. <laughs> it's too real now. <laughs> it is a little bit. <laughs> but I do kill all my plants, so maybe that's bad news for Clint. Uh oh. I smile guiltily. Yeah, that would probably be for the best. Don't want to nod off on the road, you know? Of course. Leo looks at me, hesitantly. Listen. I know this was probably going to be our last time getting together before we all split off, but... You want to try this again? In the future? Maybe over the summer when we don't have school to worry about. I just feel like we left a lot unsaid. Well, I really have that nap, so like, I gotta go, bye. I'll be napping next summer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it doesn't have to be everyone. Maybe this time, I'll just tell Flynn not to come around. I smile back at Leo. Yeah, uh, that sounds good. I, I think that'd be a great time. 
Just lying. Just lying. You're never talking to any of these people again. They hate you. They all hate you. There's, they, there's they, several people here that probably hate you more than Flynn does. And Leo, like, would be the one that could like you. So maybe you should try yeah. with this one. This one person left out of your, like, like five friends. This poor Leo thinks he's going to just organize this again next summer and try again. It's like, nope. Chase burned down your entire friend network, which was frankly incredibly flimsy to begin with. It was so flammable because it was all made of spider webs. <laughs> Yeah, at the end of the day, maybe, maybe, Chase, maybe you should just start again. Yeah. <laughs> Go find some more new friends. Everyone, just everyone needs to move and lose their phone numbers. <laughs> yeah. Everyone needs to just move on. I think it's actually the best for everybody. Leo smiles back, looking genuinely relieved and happy. Ah, that's so good to hear. And I'll be sure Dad knows what uh, that I want the week off. And then he'll ignore that and schedule you anyway, like my work does. Yeah. <laughs> It's, I'm confused why Leo thinks that would work, unless he's implying he didn't do that this time. Which is like, why didn't you do why that this you, time, yeah. Leo? Uh, good luck with that. <laughs> and I'll let TJ and Jenna know. He's not going to tell them, because he's never going to talk to them again, because they hate him. Uh, thanks, Chase. Leo stands there for a moment, then, sta then steps forward to give me a hug. I hug back tightly before letting him go. I stand in the doorway until Leo's van pulls out of the parking lot, heading in the direction of the highway, probably on his way to work. Once he's gone, I deflate, feeling as if that one conversation had been equal to hours of hard labor. Oh my gosh! Burn! <laughs> burn, 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 mean, mean, mean. He hates everyone in his life. Chase has not said anything nice about anyone in this route, I feel, except for TJ, but only when he's trying to fuck him. Yeah. And he was completely wrong about that dynamic the entire time. Still, watching him go, I get a sense of sadness. Like that was the last time we'd ever see each other the way we are now. I mean, you could argue that every time you see anyone, it's the last time you're going to see them the way they are now. Yeah, what does that mean? What are you about to do, Chase? That's worrying. He's talking about crossing a threshold in his life. He's, he's talking about, like, about permanently changing. Maybe he should change into not being such an asshole. Maybe that should be the threshold he, he crosses over yeah. in his life. But it's not like going to be. That's not what we're talking about. He's so afraid of things going wrong in a way that changes his, his life forever that he's talking about specifically making a different choice that will also change his life forever. That's None of that sounds good. <laughs> none, none of that sounds good at all. What, what, what's the, what's the, what did you do? To, what, what was the note about Chase? Yeah. It, Where's the note? That, is it still in your pocket? I have. I is it still in his pocket, torn apart? Is it? I don't remember if he threw. I don't it. remember. Did he, did he burn it? No, no, he did put it in his pocket because I remember thinking I remember. that that was stupid until I was. Like, we both said like he should throw yeah. it in the lake I'm because to... why would you keep it? Well, the lake would be a bad call because it could be found. But I mean, if I, you just throw it away anywhere, on paper is not going to last in the lake. You just throw it away anywhere. No one's going to check that specific spot. <laughs> Or just, you know, burn it or tear it into a thousand pieces and then throw it out your window on the way home. Which yeah. is, I don't condone littering, but maybe in that instance it might be. Just swallow it. Or that. I Yeah. Just like, no one will find it then. <laughs> like, that'll solve it. I've eaten paper before. It's totally doable. Yeah. I believe in you, Chase. I, mean, I think most people have just eaten paper Just take bites before. on the way home. Just gets like. While you cry. Wadded a bit. <laughs> <laughs> I stumble back to the bed, almost falling asleep, almost falling before I catch myself on the edge of bo with both paws. I stare at the square patterns on the comforter, feeling a little sick. For a moment, I hear whispers coming from the dark bathroom, but I don't even look up to see if I can see that figure in the mirror. I wish I'd closed the door, but I'm not going near that place again. So I just curl back up on the bed facing away from the bathroom, closing my eyes. I'd gotten bored of skipping rocks pretty quickly. Oh. Oh, look at little Jenna. Aww. Baby Jenna with overalls. She's wearing, a, like, overall jumpers. Like a jumper. She wasn't that happy back then. You can't trick me. <laughs> Freaking baby Leo in a, in a, in a, a soccer jersey. Yeah. <laughs> Leo was so good at it. 
He could skip them over the water five times before they sunk. It's actually very impressive. Even Jenna could do at least three. Mine would splat once and sing like, sink like stones they were. After Leo laughed at my last one, I glared and decided to go further down the beach where no one else could go. Hey, not in the way of the rocks. You're going to get hit. Leo telling me to be careful only made me more angry, <laughs> and I cut through the water, <laughs> far below the surface so they couldn't see me. I go back in the direction where we came from, wondering if Sydney and Toby are in the, shallow the shallows, that I might be able to surprise them. When I come around the curve in the beach, I see they are in fact in the shallows. But I can tell immediately that something isn't right. Toby's flat on his stomach in the water. Sydney is sitting on his back. Oh. Toby has just enough room that his head barely sticks out of the water. As I poke my head up, I can hear the cat sobbing. Sydney was really a little shit. There, there's something very scary about... Um, Child bullying. The, the, and like, the, the, the ability for children to be really cruel. I think yeah. it, it means a lot about us as human beings. But like, there's a lot of movies that remind me of this where it's like you have a group of kids and there's just one kid who's bullying is just like a, like a step past everyone's by far and you're like that kid's gonna be a sociopath that there's so like that's mm. I, I just think about like hearing that like I, I think that like the part of your brain that best processes is empathy doesn't finish developing until you're like 20 or something and so as a kid you're just capable of like just nightmarish shit, because you're not even thinking about other people as people half the time, unless you're really, like, socialized to think about it. Well, but, but not only... But I think that a lot of those people just grow up to be adults, but what happens when you're adult, an adult is you understand that there are social repercussions, but that part's still there in you. I just think you know how to pretend like it's not, but then it's yeah. still there. And then I think you get people that are immensely cruel because they still have that, they just don't always show it because it's not smart. To always show it. I don't think you have to be a psycho though to do like fucked up things growing up. Like it's, I think sometimes it's just that like you just like a lot of people look back at their child selves and like, what the fuck was I doing? I was like, definitely, why? I was a little, I was definitely a little bitch. Like I did some mean things, <laughs> right? But but there's a certain line, right? There's a certain line. Like I would never. There's the kid that like does this where they almost kill their friend. There's kids that kill animals. There's kids that do stuff like that. And mm -hmm. that's the little weird, like, there's a switch in your brain that's just like, mm -hmm. watch that one. Watch that kid. And, like, I've, I've, having younger siblings that are much, much younger than me, watching them grow up, there was a couple of friends that I was like, you can't come over anymore. Because it's like, yeah, they're like, oh, oh, nice puppy. I'm, I want to smash its head in. And I'm like, yeah, you kid? Because that actually, <laughs> that actually happened. I was like, yeah, you're not allowed over here anymore. Oh, no, I, I've had instances, like, there was the, uh, my brother would often tell a story from elementary school about like how the kids were all gathered around like this like this little like this like a, a chick that was like stranded like just some little bird and like this one shit that everyone hated he just came in and stomped on it like in front of everybody and it's like and it's like that was then like nobody liked that kid already like they were always awful all the time and I'm like that's just a bad sign it's a bad sign for them to behave that way in that situation oh my gosh i would have fought that kid <laughs> i almost got in a fight because some kid stepped on a caterpillar in front of me on purpose mm. and i almost i didn't fight him but i wrote an article about it in the school newspaper because <laughs> i was in like the fifth grade and i was allowed to write articles for the school newspaper and i wrote one about to a, a, a PSA to be nice to the caterpillars and my teacher let me publish it the, qu the question here is what do you think happens in this scene um this is something I've kind of thought this is what I think is going to happen and to be honest it's something I've thought about for a while ever since Sydney has been shown as being a bully I think Chase tries to save Toby but they both accidentally kill Sydney do you think it's like a shared mistake that they have that they've been like hiding? Yeah, and I don't think, I don't think that TJ, like TJ, I don't think has an active role in killing Sydney, but he feels complicit because he's the reason that Chase stepped in to begin with. And like Chase goes to therapy over it, TJ represses it, but then has this like 
fucked up, complicated, weird reliance on Chase, even though he also kind of hates him in certain ways. Yeah. Like, they keep having this, like, sort of confusing, trusting relationship. He's, he's, he's like, this forced friend that he, you will always have to have because you have a shared traumatic experience. Yeah. But I do think that TJ will would forever, from that point, have a lot of guilt about the situation, despite him not being the specific reason or have it be any of... Like, none of it, it would be his fault. Because there's such a complicated web of, like... Like, younger Chase that was after here, that's dating Leo, just kind of resents TJ and sees him as a nuisance but TJ at that age like trusts him enough to like bring up these conversations where he thinks he might be gay and stuff like that like he's like confiding in Chase despite Chase clearly just being kind of annoyed with him and wanting to just hang out with Leo all the time in those stories and it's like there's like a really specific like and then that somehow warps into modern them where TJ sees Chase as like one of his close friends and Chase is somehow and Chase is managing to reinterpret all of this as being romantic attraction. And like this, the, the arc is distressing between these characters. Yeah, so, like the reason, so ever since, okay, so TJ was the first one because of Flynn's outburst. TJ is the first one to have been implied to be very close to the situation that happened, right? And then as soon as I figured out, A, TJ likes Chase for no reason. Everyone here is friends. They're all friends, friends, quote, quote, friends. But TJ looks up to Chase and there's no reason for that. that yeah. So, okay. So I was like, okay. And then as soon as you start hearing about how Chase had to defend TJ from Sydney, because that's come up a couple times ever since then, ever since Sydney's been portrayed as being kind of a punk ass kid, I've had that thought. Yeah. And I think that's what's going to happen. <laughs> like Sydney's kind of been a, a jackass, but we've established also that like Chase can just floor him. And even modern Chase is weirdly strong. Like he, what the fuck? Like he beat, I didn't like expect he also him to beat, beat up Flynn. Like, yeah, he took out Flynn in a fight. And I, I looked up their heights too, and like because I was I was curious. Uh, I think uh, Leo is six four and Flynn is six seven. <laughs> like Flynn is a large person, and uh, and Chase floored him, and we know that he can take he could take Sydney back in the day. Sydney might even be younger, and so there's just. Mm, to be fair, uh, otters are demons. <laughs> yeah, but like this whole time, ever since we learned anything about Sydney, there's been the, the floating question of like, how did the otter drown? Yeah, yeah. That suspicion number one: drowned otter. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then it does seem to come up that yeah, like T, like TJ is implied to have been close to the situation, but it's very uh, tight-lipped about it. And it's like, why would you be tight-lipped about it? Are you trying to protect somebody else? Because I don't think you did it, TJ. Yeah. I don't feel like you would do it, but I feel like you would not say something if someone that you cared about did it. And look, you have this person you really care about for like no good reason, and you look up to a lot. Hmm, it's like you guys have some sort of special bond. There's a question of whether TJ is actively lying, or if he just repressed it entirely. I think... Well, Chase not thinking that TJ could have written the notes makes me think that TJ repressed it. But I think the, the TJ's brain knows, and so I think TJ's been writing those notes without him even being aware he's been writing them. Yeah. They make more sense coming from some version of TJ than they do coming from some version of Chase. Because it's not just about what the notes say, which could be Chase taunting himself, but like... The specifics of how they were where they were and the evidence the like the like the physical and witness evidence surrounding the notes existences and and like tj having really really specific knowledge of where stuff is and even the fucking red panda being like yeah i thought someone broke in the other day <laughs> I like think there's too there's too much indicating that tj has to have done this on some level and because of his reaction i don't think he knows he did it but I think he definitely did it. And I think it's his fucked up weird guilt complex he has over the situation that's like bleeding through yeah. his actual life. Unless the T a TJ Tolpa did it. Like a duplicate of TJ that is all of his like repressed trauma is, spe is specifically like framing this. This, uh, this, the TJ Tolpa has a goatee. <laughs> <laughs> Just has a shaved spot where the goatee would be. <laughs> Every <laughs> As I poke my head up, I can I can hear the cat sobbing. Sydney isn't saying much at all. He's got a strange look on his face. It's a look that I've seen before, 
like that time he'd covered Toby's mouth and nose when he'd had him pinned down, and we'd had to pull them apart. The same look when he'd thrown a dirt clod with a rock at the lynx's head. A look that was determined, almost empty, but completely fascinated with what he was doing. Almost like he liked it. Something about this situation scared me, though. The other times we'd been there to, he to help separate them, or stop Sydney from going too far. But now, it looked like he was trying to kill the cat. Every now and then, a wave would slosh over Toby's mouth and nose, and he'd yell and struggle frantically, begging Sydney to get off. But Sydney just sat there, enamored with his own cruelty. He was going to kill Toby, just like he killed his dad. Um? Oh. Um? I don't think Sydney killed his dad, but I know that they all think that Sydney killed his dad. Right, that was the rumor at the swings, right? Yeah. They did they, they, like a hunting trip or something? Was that what it was? Yeah. Mm. But I can see why they think he might have killed his dad, because he's definitely that kind of kid I was just talking about. In this, given this setting, I wonder if something's up with Sydney besides the the usual expectation for this behavior, like if something's actually like taking over it all. I hope not, because I think the situation. I think I think the reality is scarier than yeah. the idea of anything like that, and that's how I feel about most things. It's yeah. almost kind of a disappointment when it's due to possession, because I'm like I, I like the the depth of human cruelty. I think that's the scariest thing of all. My vision blurs as I go under and speed towards them. I leap out of the water to knock Sydney off the links as hard as I can. Sydney falls back in the water before quickly pushing himself back up. I see the look of horror on his face. Not at what I'm about to do to him, but because he got caught doing something bad. That's horrible. He doesn't even feel bad about it at all. Not just bad, <laughs> but weird and scary and something that no one should ever do. Not even if you're a kid. I don't think he could ever explain why he liked doing it. That look imprints itself on my mind. TJ runs off. I don't know where to. I try to get Sydney to tell me what he was doing for a while. I don't remember exactly what happens, but I get angry. I throw a punch. It misses and hits him in the throat instead. He lets out a hard cough reaching up with both paws to clutch at his neck. He manages to stumble to his feet without using his paws, his Luce Lobo swim trunks wetly clinging to his legs. I don't give him a chance to stand for long. I tackle him again and grab his head, shoving it underwater. He scrambles frantically. I feel a dark satisfaction in my chest, in a way that I can at the way I can hear his screams through the bubbling of his ex exhaling breath. I finally let him go after a good ten seconds, and he comes up, gagging and choking. He starts to scramble away on his paws and knees before getting up. I see snot hanging from his nose and chin as he stumbles, snorting out of water, and I can tell he's about to cry. Is that me? Am I Sydney? I don't remember. Maybe? <clears throat> Maybe. <laughs> you... You tried to kill me. I'm telling Leo. You tried to murder me. So that was it. For some reason, the way he immediately tried to put that on me. It was then that I believed he was trying to kill TJ. Leo would never have believed it. <laughs> Maybe not even on purpose. Maybe just waiting for him to act for it to accidentally happen. Or at least Leo wouldn't have believed Chase would do it. Yeah. He might have I don't know how they if if only I don't know if only Chase notices that, that Sydney's cruel. Because but but Chase has mentioned several times stories where Yeah. Well he said they collectively had to pull him off of him and stuff. Okay. As a group. I don't know. But now he was going to make everyone think I'm a murderer. Even though we all know he did it. He stumbles away and I go after him, grabbing him. He's trying to kill me! His voice is weak, and so is his body. Especially in the water. I poke my head up, 
through the waves in front of the others. Otter, move. We're going to hit your head. I shrug my shoulders, dipping under the water again so that I can hug myself and tremble alone. Again, time passes in a way that I'm not familiar with. What happened there? He's trying to kill me. His voice is weak, especially in the water. There's like a time skip. Poke my head up through the waves in front of the others. It just ends. Like, there's no... It doesn't describe any continued... Like, it doesn't describe Sydney's death or any more, like, stuff happening. It says his body is weak, especially in the water. Yeah. I wonder then, if he drowns trying to swim back. But, just, but it doesn't seem like it. He's still he's talking, like he's still functioning. It might be a time skip. Like well, this ellipses just doesn't it just skips the rest of what he did. And it just skips to him showing up in front of Leo and everyone like an alibi. So maybe so okay, so I get like what he, he probably was gone for a little enough time that they might have even thought he was just holding his breath and was there the whole time. I mean he could have they could have had an underwater b battle because, <laughs> you know, they're both otters. But now I understand why Chase wouldn't think, think that TJ... So, okay, so I, I, like I said, I think TJ saw, but he doesn't think TJ saw. Yeah. TJ is always known. Maybe that's why he wouldn't think TJ would know. Because TJ was somewhere. He doesn't know where he was. But I think he would. He think he saw yeah. whatever happened. But he hugs himself and trembles alone. So, like, something happened. Like, he went through something that that... There's something in the dot, dot, dot. Yeah, he didn't just break up a fight and then hit Sydney and then go away if he's, like, trembling here. Yeah, Sydney's trying to go back something and narc on him for something that he didn't really do. And so, in between the time where he's feeling stress about Sydney going off to do that and here, like, it's implied that he's by himself now. Yeah. Interesting. Hmm. <laughs> well... 